Today I'm here with Joe Marconi from Johnson & Bell, who's going to talk a little bit about trade secret litigation cases he's been involved with and how computer forensics has played a key role in getting success for him and his clients. Joe, uh, thanks for being on the show. Uh, thank you, Lee. It's good to see you again. Joe, we started working together a long time ago. Um, the first case that we had was one of my very first forensic expert cases ever. I think it was back in uh, 2002 or 2003. It was the Liebert matter. Can you tell us a little bit more about what, what the issues were involved there and what was ultimately what happened in that case? Yeah, that was uh, Liebert versus Mazur. It was a trade secrets case and it uh, we actually uh, tried it um, in a bench trial and it went to the appellate court twice and the appellate court uh, actually quoted from your uh, testimony uh, at the trial and, and in that case it was a sales distributor um, who uh, we sued their top salesman. We represented the manufacturer and the local distribution company and uh, you were able to prove that before the their key employee sales representative left the distributor, he downloaded uh, a number of files shortly before, a couple of weeks before. Um, and uh, as with other trade secrets cases that I've been involved in, and I've, tri I've tried several, um, computer forensics are very important. And you've been helpful, I think, in three or four of them. Yeah. Thanks. I remember we had one case we worked on where your firm was being accused of spoliation of evidence. Can you tell people a little bit about that? Uh, in that case, what, uh, we, that, that case involved again, and, and, and typically what happens, uh, the trade secrets case, it's usually an, an employee uh, leaves the company or a sales distributor uh, distribution company, terminates a contract with, uh, with the manufacturer, and uh, in the process they take trade secrets. In this case, again, it was a uh, local distributor. It was, it, the case involved a, a, a company that distributed uh, wines from all over the world, and the, um, the 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 new employer of the distribu dis local distributor hired us to defend it and its former and its now current uh, uh, employee. And uh, we had her computer, and we did a and you did a forensic hard drive of the computer, um, or, or you made a forensic copy of the hard drive. And it, it was blank, and the court um, accused it, not the firm, but um, this particular distributor of um, destroying evidence, and that was the key issue in the case. And uh, during trial, we had a, an unusual moment, uh, uh, and the night before uh, the testimony by your uh, forensic expert, uh, you were able to open it up and show that nothing was really destroyed. And, and at trial that day, uh, the other side's forensic ex expert made a, a big point about how this hard drive had been wiped, and it had been wiped um, to destroy evidence of, of her misappropriation of trade secrets. And um, we then put on uh, your forensic expert, and uh, he testified he, he, and we, we displayed it with a, with a, a screen and everything, and he, and he opened it up. And the judge um, uh, threw her pencil down on the desk, looked at her law clerks who were sitting here, there, and said, this does not happen every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I, I recall that was a situation where the hard drive, uh, the other experts said the hard drive was completely wiped clean based on his testing of that drive on a PC, but in fact, um, I had my expert stay late that night and connect the drive to all different types of computers. And when it was connected to a Macintosh computer, lo and behold, uh, it prompted for a password to decrypt the hard drive. So the hard drive was actually encrypted. And once a password was supplied, voila, it wasn't a drive empty, but it had all the data. And the judge certainly was animated. I, I think the transcript on that was... Uh, a really interesting case. Yeah, and the and the the opponent's expert had no clue. That was that was the and and the lawyer said to me afterwards, "I'm going to sue that guy." The lawyer for the I, opponent. I felt bad for the expert, but you know that's one of the problems that happens. 
when you hire a computer forensic expert that hasn't been doing it for a very long time, problems can happen and mistakes happen. And right. And, and, you know, for the most part, um, you know, the, the times we've used you have dealt with uh, trade secrets and, um, uh, you know, I, and I also remember the case uh, that we recently tried last year in federal court um, regarding a Chinese manufacturer and, and, again, an employee left a manufacturing company, started, started a, a uh, competitive uh, distributorship here in Chicago and employed a, a Chinese manufacturer to make uh, products for the same market and um, the local manufacturer claimed that he had taken the pl plans and designs of the products and had given them to the Chinese manufacturer and and you helped us uh, disprove that or or also helped us to prove that they couldn't prove that that happened. Um, so that's another example of a trade secrets case. So I, f I find, you know, um, computer forensics almost a, an essential part of any uh, trade secrets case. So you've had the experience being on kind of all sides, the, the, the firm that lost the employee, the firm that hired the employee, right. and you've been able to get good results for your client whether they're plaintiff or defense. Yeah, the issues uh, are the same no matter what side you are, and uh, there's not really only plaintiffs, trade secrets lawyers and defense lawyers. It's, you know, you, you either defend them or you prosecute them. And uh, I've done both over the years, and uh, uh, it's a fascinating area of the law. And, okay. it, and, it's, and, it, and it's something that every company deals with when they lose a an employee, when they lose a uh, manufacturer, and and you know, as a matter of course, when when a, one of my clients lose a sensitive employee that has uh, confidential information, one of the first things I do is call you to make a forensic hard drive of that of that of that person's computer before anyone uh, opens the file and in any way. Uh, causes it to change at all. And you can explain why that's important. Well, well I, I appreciate you calling me when that happens. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Joe. Uh -huh. Well, if you want to know more about computer forensics, please check out our blog. Uh, my blog is at leenebecker.com. And you can also find Joe and Joe's contact information there. Thank you, Joe. Thank you.